Hello and a very warm welcome to the channel. I'm back in my kitchen. This is where I filmed my first ever reaction video, would have been I think a little over a year ago. Uh, also my most watched ever video. So quite clearly my, the, the past year has just been watching my content slowly decline in, in viewership and quality. But it doesn't matter because it's great fun. Um, I'm not going to swivel the camera around just because by the sink there is an embarrassing amount of washing up. And when I say embarrassing, I don't mean like a few plates I probably should have done. I mean I'm like embarrassed not just about myself but of the human species in general that it's got to that state. Now I want to do another American history reaction video. I've done quite a few of those now. I, I, I think I've got the basics. I think I'd notice if someone started really bullshitting me. Um, if, it, 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 if one of the videos starts to about Hannibal crossing the Rocky Mountains on his elephants, I'd know that's not true. So this video is a history of the United States, I guess. It's by, it's, it's the same style, I think, as a couple I've done before, but it's actually from a different viewer. It's from a guy called Crispy Karim, I think. Um, so, of course, original video in the description, as always. Um, please go show them some love. Show me some love. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And let's watch the video. Let's go. The United States is a country on Earth with 50 states. It's powerful and it's American. Yes. It's pretty cold and human that. beings are trying to spread all over the planet. They reached the edge and they got sticks and babies. Hey, guys. No, no, the babies came before the sticks. Sorry to, am I thinking about it, you need sticks to make babies. So I, I'm going to cut off that train of thought there before I get my channel suspended. Check out this bridge. It goes to the other side of the world. And there's a lot of food. Oh, nice. Well, you're all stuck now. Okay, so people are chilling out on the land, gathering food and hunting mammoths. Well, they died, but they got a backup. Hey, now that we got food and land, let's form a society. Oh, someone just discovered gambling, but more importantly, someone just discovered farming. And it, it's almost impossible to overstate how important the agricultural revolution was. Um, I, I, I can't remember who it is, but there was some historian who basically said there have been two events in human history, the agricultural revolution and the industrial revolution. Anything beyond that is full of notes. Now, clearly that's an exaggeration and kind of done slightly for comic effect, but there's also a degree of truth in it. And it's very interesting that agriculture developed independently in several different places, so in, in the Middle East. Uh, Mesopotamia, Egypt, in India, in China, and also in, in parts of Central America, um, which kind of suggests that it would have developed another human civilization as well had, had it been given the chance to do so. So rather than just being developed in one place and spreading out, it erupted independently in several places. I mean, it, it, it was the same with writing, um, which I think is really interesting. Wait, we could have just planted stuff in the ground? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And soon everybody learned about this, planting corn in the process. Hey, now that we got farming, let's form a better society. Then they make some hills, then they die. But they still make those hills, making a city around one. Meanwhile, the Mayan- I'd love to know more about these kind of like ancient or, or, or very old um, ancient American civilizations. I mean, it kind of reminds me that some of those forts they were building looks a little bit like you get um, what called hill forts in the UK, which were built pre-Roman by Iron Age and Bronze Age tribes. Kind of reminds me a bit of that. So I'm thinking maybe that kind of level of, um, of technology, but no, I'd really like to know more. Fans become so obsessed with the <laughs> Then they collapse. Some natives in the West liked the desert, building their town under some rocks. North America was getting pretty diverse, pretty complicated, and pretty beautiful. Sort of. The Aztec and the Inca empires are getting started. Wait, hold up. Check out this boat. Not not. It's Columbus from Europe. Yo, what's up, my Indians? Where my spice is at? Columbus Play. Okay, that, that's probably the least racist Columbus I've ever heard. He was um, an interesting guy, let's say, on that front. I mean, it's a really interesting question as to why the Europeans suddenly became so interested in, in finding an alternative route to India. Um, and, well, and to China, for that matter. Ch kind of China and India is what they're aiming for. Obviously, some of it had to do with advances in shipbuilding, which just made it more sense to try sailing west rather than east. But there's an interesting fear that it's partly because of disruptions to the the, the, um, the, the, the the Spice Road, which was kind of a traditional trading point between Europe and um, and, and the East and Far East, um, particularly around the time of the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Empire, which may have um, disrupted the trade somewhat. I'm not sure if that's true, but I think it's an interesting theory. 
slightly asked, does disease kill the entire population? Hey, so- it's also it's interesting that it was American, the European disease that kill killed so many um, Native Americans, and not the other way around. I mean, obviously there are diseases that came from America to Europe. So I, I think syphilis is American. That 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 one's on you, America. Um, but but generally the diseases European spread proved to be far more deadly. I don't know why that was, um, but you, you you can't suggest if it had been the other way around. Some European explorers had arrived in the Americas, brought back American diseases, and then they devastated Europe. Um, the, the the kind of the arrival of the Europeans in America could have been a catastrophe for Europe rather than what it was, which is kind of the, the beginning of the making of Europe. Spain, I found India. India? <laughs> and so Europe began legally assaulting the Americas. Sorry guys, give it a second. Wait, this isn't even India, but dang, check out these resources. Hey Portugal, I'll take all of this and you take this tiny chunk because I'm better than you. In the meantime- So that actually happened, the, the Pope literally put a line, everything to the west of that is Spanish, to the east of that is Portuguese, which is why Brazil is Portuguese and everything else in America up other than the it, British bits is Spain. Um, let's use the natives to do the work for us. But the natives died, remember? So plan B. Check out the new Columbus Triangle. So that, this is the, the infamous, quite rightly, transatlantic slave trade, uh, where essentially raw goods would be taken from Europe to Africa. They'd be traded with various different African kingdoms. These African kingdoms would go out and kidnap huge numbers of, um, of people from other African tribes and other African kingdoms, sell them to Europeans for raw goods, um, they'd be taken to the Caribbean and um, in horrendous conditions and obviously in a, a lot of cases work to death. Um, and then the, the resulting cotton and various other things were taken back to Europe. So a, a, a horrendous practice. Angle thing, now in business. I want a bigger slice of that wealth cake, suckers. Well, okay, the- well no, 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 wait. Why on this <laughs> so have we got Pru- Prussia or Germany is now England. Britain is now, or, or Britain is now Spain. Okay, oh, well, wh- whatever. Suit yourself. At least they got France right. So that wealth cake suckers. The British are off to set up a colony. Second try, by the way. And they did it. Look at that tobacco. Britain kind of sucked religiously. Ew, said the pilgrims sailing away for Jesus. Dude, let's make some colonies. With more colonies. In the middle. I can't eat pork, but bacon... I mean, it's a really interesting how the... Amongst, amongst the English settlers... The first two groups were very, very disparate. So obviously you had the kind of the, the Mayflower pilgrims who were extremely religiously conservative. Um, and then you had kind of more conventional settlers who, who settled in other places who were a lot less so. And it's really interesting how those two dynamics kind of combine um, into America. Ar- arguably you could even see them in modern America, but that, that, that might be me reading too much into it. Just made slavery popular. England still sucks. <laughs> hey guys, check out... I mean, that's, that's just, just like a, you, you say at any point of history, couldn't you? When you crib, you can do whatever you want. Check out those immigrants. Let's talk about- like, Genuinely, I'm getting concerned by some of these dudes' accents. Like, they're, 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 they're very borderline, <laughs> I'll put it that way. The South. Here, slavery was a big hit. What did Britain do about yeah. this? Nothing. Sweet, we're free. <laughs> Because we gotta stay Christian. Europe was getting intellectual. The colonists heard about it and started reading stuff like John Locke, Adam Smith, Toad, understanding liberty and democracy. Check this one out. Britain and France are killing each other. Britain win. Again, that, that's something you could say during about a 1,000 year period of history. Not, not always the Britain winning bit though. I mean, in fairness, it was England before that. And they're broke. Damn, we need some cash. Hey, can we go west? No. Also give so that, that's true. So what, I mean, there are lots of grievances amongst the colonists. Um, obviously, the main one was, was indeed taxation, but it wasn't the only one. Um, so I mean, Britain took a huge amount of land off France and also a bit off Spain. I think it took Florida off Spain during, after the Seven Years' War. Um, but the British weren't that keen for it to be York colonised immediately, in particular because they didn't really want a, another bunch of wars with, with Native American tribes. Um, and this caused quite a lot of resentment amongst the American colonists who did want to, to, to carry on pushing west immediately. And obviously that wasn't the main reason for the revolution, but I, I, I think it was an interesting contributing factor. Us money. So Britain starts taxing the hell out of the colonies. Something just happened in Boston, and Revere told everybody, let's dump some tea in the ocean because they taxed it. Hey Britain, can you stop ignoring us? Britain didn't really care, they just kept doing it. Okay, we gotta talk about this, people. So Britain's clapping us right now, but I think we can still make peace with them. Look, another shooting. And 
We were told everybody. So this, that's this, not. So this is the, this is obviously the war of independence starting. Um, like fascinating alternative history question. If Britain had actually listened to the colonists' demands um, and had say stopped massively reduced taxation or given the Americans political representation in the, 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 London, the Parliament in London on a kind of equal basis, what would have happened? W would modern America be more like Canada? Um, I mean, maybe America would never have expanded anything like as far as it did. I, I, I find alternative history fascinating. What's not happening to Thomas Paine writing a book about independence? Now people hated Britain and they declared independence. You guys suck. Yeah. You want to team up against Britain? <laughs> and they destroy Cornwallis. And it wasn't just France, it, it, it was Spain and the Netherlands as well. Um, I mean, quite a lot of European countries hated Britain, so when America wanted allies, there are quite a few to choose from. And they win. Get out of here, Britain! Now we're in control. Oh, we need a government! They create a constitution, but a bunch of farmers made it fail. Okay, we gotta talk about this, people. We need to remaster our government. The states had some ideas. Let's just do both and create the Congress and stuff. Some people like this, but some people didn't like it. So they add 10 rules to make sure they like it. We need a leader! So they invent- So uh, one of the amazing things about America is the fact that after independence in Britain, all the states held together together because that, that was by no means inevitable i mean you could have had pennsylvania being one country and massachusetts being another country and so on and so forth in which case america would look a lot more like europe kind of a, a patchwork of different nations um the fact that they they held together which was pretty incredible i think is a, a key reason that america developed into the superpower did now obviously part of the reason they held together was because they were scared of outside powers um scared of britain coming back scared of france scared, scared of spain but if they hadn't managed to hold together, the history of the world would be very, very different, I think. And the president, and everyone made it this guy because he was such a legend during the war. Nice bank, Hamilton. Wait, how strict should the constitution be? Yes. No. Goodbye, Washington. <laughs> Wait, he's got something to say. Don't make political parties. Worst mistake of my life. Okay, said America, creating them anyway. Hey, can we now follow the law? Whoa, France is going cray cray right now. Probably because we did that. Napoleon wants to remake an empire with this huge chunk of land he's got. He failed. Might as well sell it. Hey, do you want my land? Oh, one of the big reasons France gave up, up with Louisiana was there was a slave rebellion on Haiti, a very successful slave rebellion. I mean, most slave rebellions, unfortunately, got snuffed out very quickly, but there was a, a really successful one in France where the, the slaves actually won um, and kind of created their own state. And a, a huge number of French troops got dragged into that conflict, and it was and it was a fee. Um, so that, that uh, ironically, a, a, a big part of the reason that France lost a huge chunk of territory, and I must say, huge, absolutely ginormous chunk of territory in North America, is because of a defeat on the very small Caribbean island of Haiti. Um, so yeah, yeah, go free slaves. Okay. Some people saw Jefferson as a hypocrite after this. What? I did it! I ended slavery! Said Eli Whitney, inventing something that just increased it. What is Britain doing? Dude, they're stealing our semen! <laughs> never I, I can say personally, I have never stolen any American semen. And any claims to the country are libelous. Never mind, it's land. Let's go! Nice, new reform movements. Now slavery is becoming controversial. <laughs> Yo, they're using machines now? What the heck? And it made the North more complicated. Everyone's moving to cities. And slavery's still bad, but you know, it's balanced perfectly. Hey guys, I want to become a state, specifically a slave. Please stop doing the accent. I'm getting genuinely disturbed. Slave state. Yes, Ooh, sir, bitch! <sighs> Screw you, we're adding Maine to the gang. Hey, Europe, stay out of our area. You're pathetic. Henry Clay just... So the modern road doctrine is really interesting. And it was remarkably successful. So, I mean, it was essentially America telling the Europeans that the entire American sphere, not just North America, but also South America, um, was, was out of bounds for them. Now, now, obviously, there were exceptions. So uh, Canada still remained under, under British control. A lot of the Caribbean was under European control. But for South America, it broadly works. And it meant once the Spanish and the Portuguese empires ended, South America did largely become independent. Um, and it wasn't just recolonized by other European powers. And we can kind of see what probably would have happened had America not adopted the Monroe Doctrine during the American Civil War. When all of a sudden, because America is distracted, can't enforce the Monroe Doctrine. Lots of European countries suddenly become very interested in building empires in, in um, Central and South America, particularly the French in Mexico, but the, um, the British and the Spanish were sniffing around as well. 
So yeah, the, the, the Moon Road doctrine was remarkably effective. Just announced a dank new system. We'll be good if the South didn't hate it. John C. Calhoun's evading taxes again. Ooh. I want to remove the natives. You can't. Why? Because we said so. Okay. And he removed the natives. Check out the wigs versus the... So is that, was that the Trail of Tears? Or was that, was that like another time the Native Americans were treated horrendously? I think, there's, I think there's quite a few out there, basically. Donkeys. Industry is fire right now, but factory working is horrible. Yeah. Let's just stop working. Let's go west because we're American. They go west, kicking the natives in Mexico in the process. A lot of Irish people just died, so everybody starts emigrating. Yeah, um, as a British person, let's not go into the reasons behind that. Grading to the country. This? It was, it, we do not come out of it well. Sucks, said the Know Nothing Party, knowing nothing on foreign influence. We got more land, but how do we use it? Okay, that new land from Mexico? No slaves here. You can make a political party out of this. It didn't work, but it did piss off the South. Don't worry, I got this, said Henry Clay again, adding California after our gold thing happened there. It didn't go well. Frick it, let's let the people decide. <laughs> Never mind. The woman just had a pretty cool- So that, that, that was, um, oh, what's it called? The, 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 some, the raising of Kansas or something like that? Kind of a, a period of intense political violence immediately preceding the, the Civil War. We'll meet up advocating better rights. Introducing the elephants as if donkeys weren't- I do love it how America, one of America's political parties voluntarily has got a donkey as its symbol. I, I think that it, it shows a lot of self-confidence to go, yeah, we're a donkey, what are you going to do with it? Or an elephant for that matter. Like, it's not like lions or um, unicorns or eagles, it's a donkey and an elephant. I, I'm very impressed with that. Enough. Hey, excuse me, I'm in the north and my master died, can I be free and be like a citizen? No. Cause you're black. The nation started falling apart. After all, the last several presidents didn't really even do anything. <laughs> Guys, I'm Lincoln and slavery is disgusting. I'm running for president, by the way. By the way, he won. So correct me if I'm wrong, Americans. And my understanding of Lincoln is that whilst he was anti-slavery, he probably wouldn't have abolished slavery. Um, in, in DC, he almost certainly would have maintained it in some form had it not been for the recession of the South. Um, I, th I think there's some quote attributed to him where he basically says um, that slavery is disgusting, but if that had been what was necessary to hold the union together, I would have kept it. I, I may have this completely wrong, in which case please shout at me in the comment section. Come on. Wait, guys, I won't take away your slaves. Just chill for a bit. Yeah! Nah. <laughs> The country's fighting itself. Guys, we need to fight like a snake right now. I'm gonna free the slaves. Except it didn't really do anything, but it did change the idea. But can you imagine how, how different world history would have been if the Confederate States of America had survived as, as a separate independent power? Uh, I mean, the, the United States would still have been by far the most powerful country on the, the American continent, both North and South America but it would have been significantly weaker than it is today. And that would have just massive implications for everything. Um, I mean, I, also you kind of think there's probably a good chance that there would have been a resumption of conflict at some point in, in, in North America with Mexico, the United States and the Confederate States, possibly Canada or, or British Canada all getting involved. Um, so yeah, no, it's, I, 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 I love alternative history. It's a really interesting question. Now we're destroying slavery. Yo, but we're still fighting pretty good. Not anymore. The North just set the South on fire and they eventually died. Hey, no. So it's like sort of Sher Sherman's march to the sea. Well, I think he kind of cut a, a brutal sway through um, Confederate land. Essentially could fight, could cut the Confederacy in two. Um, and, and at times did it in quite an aggressive way and sort of broke its back. Nice, we won. Lincoln's actually chilling now. And he gets assassinated. Great, now we gotta rebuild everything. The South kinda still did slavery and pretended the war never happened. The whites wanted to stay the best race, so they start using violence. And now the US was looking beautiful on the outside, but disgusting in the inside. Businesses became bigger, but the working conditions became badder. This- So uh, uh, this is the interesting part of American history. Ah! Hang on, I, I think I've just, um, I, I thought I stopped it, but I think I just muted it. Let's, let's Working conditions became badder. This sucks, said the Knights of Labor. Yeah, we're only taking skilled workers, bro. Hey, farmers, do you hate- Yes, yeah, so this is an interesting point. America had quite an active um, early socialist and anarchist movement. I mean, it never took on in the way it took off in Europe. Uh, socialism, that is, or, and, and, and Marxism for that matter. 
Um, and America's resistance to socialism is one of the most fascinating things about the country. I mean, compared to anywhere in Europe, even the UK um, have had much, much bigger organized socialist parties. But also American anarchism, had. There, there was a brief period where kind of violent anarchism became quite a big thing in America. I mean, one of the problems the presidents was assassinated. Uh, I mean, it, roughly the same time, exactly the same as happening in Europe. But it's kind of kind of interesting that that did take off in America. Great railroads and mechanized farming, introducing the Grangers, now the populists. The South was getting more industrialized, but now more racist. No, no, trust me, it's separate but equal. I'm gonna buy everybody. Wait, why don't we donate all our money for society? Sweetie, let's focus on the cities, which are garbage right now. Introducing the progressives, let's fix that crap. Oh shoot, we just ran out of land. That's some good grub right there. But Spain controls Cuba. You sunk our ship? Bro, we didn't even do And I, I think this is such a fascinating time in American history because this is where the time when America was clearly flirting with the idea of becoming a kind of European style imperial empire. So not, not, not just a land-based empire, which it arg arguably was, um, in, in, in the same way that Russia arguably was and kind of almost arguably still is, um, but it, it, it have an overseas empire like Britain and France and uh, Netherlands, Spain, etc. And for about sort of 10, 15 years, America was clearly toying with this idea in the Philippines, in Cuba, in, in Puerto Rico, and then just decided not to go ahead with it. And I think it's a really interesting question as to what would have happened had the Americans gone all out. Um, I mean, for, for example, in the scramble for Africa, if, if America tried to claim a chunk of Africa. Do anything. <laughs> now we got that grub, including the Philippines? This is lit, said William McKinley, getting assassinated. Yes, he, he, McKinley was the one who was assassinated by an anarchist, I believe. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. And they lose Cuba. The United States becomes a world power while doing some other- Now, that was obviously uh, Theodore Roosevelt, who I believe fought in, Cu Cuba, in, in, in Cuba with the Rough Riders. I hope I've got that right. Other stuff too. Sherman's vice president, not William Sherman. This is a different Sherman under the new president, William Sherman. Taft. <laughs> While Europe's killing themselves in this war, the US was actually chilling. So the American economy did really well out of the First World War um, because, I mean, some of their trade markets were shut off. Trade with Germany, for example, was restricted by the UK. Um, but generally, America did very, very well out of the first few years of the World War because suddenly there was a huge demand for, for all its armaments. Um, I mean, I, I, again, it's kind of interesting that America decided to enter the war because they didn't really have to. I mean, yes, some of their ships were getting sunk, which was annoying. And yes, the Americans were trying to, well, not the Americans, the Germans were trying to incite Mexico to attack the United States. But there wasn't, it wasn't like essential for America to get involved in the way it clearly was in the Second World War. So if America had stayed out of it, I kind of think there would have been a central power victory. Um, so, and, that, and that would have changed everything. <laughs> Germany just ruined it. I'm gonna show you what democracy feels like. Wait, we already did this scene. After the war, Germany was the dunce force to pay a lot of money. Check out the League of Nations. Can you guys join it, please? Yes, yeah, so the, the irony of the League of Nations is it was essentially an American creation. Um, but it was an American creation, the Americans decided not to join. So it, it, it was I mean, Woodrow Wilson and kind of the, the, I think it was the 14 points. Were, um, the, the, the idea that at the end of the First World War that you'd have this kind of new international system to stop countries fighting each other. But almost as soon as he devised this system, America became very isolationist, um, perhaps was slightly regretting its entanglement in a European war, and then never joined the League of Nations. So the League of Nations was, from the very beginning, whole below, oh, arguably whole below the waterline. Please? No. Whoops, a disease just killed everybody. We've had that again quite recently, haven't we? Bloody hell. Russia just became the Soviet Union, and it scared the crap out of everybody. Alcohol just got banned. That's kind of sick. And women got the right to vote. Finally. Hey, blacks, tired of the South? Move to the North and share that epic culture. The 1920s, we're now in cars, watching movies and breaking it down. And this stock thing is going to do good. The Roaring Twenties, which quite honestly, I don't feel like we're repeating 100 years later. Yet. <laughs> Perhaps things will get better. Just kidding. Yeah. Hoover tried doing something but failed. Then FDR comes in with the New Deal and it actually worked, but it failed. Yo, Germany's going wild. Italy's going wild. And Japan? Guys, we should team up and take over the entire world. 
Damn it, I gotta run for a third term. The US did their same brilliant. Yeah, so I, this I don't get. So, did was Roosevelt president for three terms or was he just president for two terms but what Van wants and wasn't re-elected? Because obviously there's now the two-term limit. Is that a more recent thing? Um, again, Americans, enlighten me in the comments. Move and was actually just chilling. Japan wanted more land, but they were scared of the US, so Japan spits on them. They declare war, and the others declare. And Japan, Japan attacking America was absolutely more like. Uh, I mean, in, in terms of industrial base, it wasn't even close. Any war between America and Japan was always very, very likely to end in an American victory eventually, because America had so many more resources. Declare war in the US. Hey, that's what friends do. The US is making a big fat bomb, like a really big one. We gotta take down Germany, man. They're freaking crazy. So they take down Germany. Then the US starts. To so this was the um, the kind of the, the, called the kind of the, the three great al allied powers who sort of kind of split the world up after World War II. Really, it was two and a half great powers. It was um, the United States and the Soviet Union, with Britain as a very, very much third player. Um, but uh, through various conferences, they kind of reset the, the map of Europe and, and, and part of Asia as well. Taken down Japan. Roosevelt died and Harry Truman carries on the presidency. Mr. President, we can't invade the mainland. Our soldiers will die. Bro, let's just use the bomb. So they drop it on Japan. Twice. The war ended after that. Goodbye, League of Nations. I mean, it was partly, the, the, I mean, it was mainly the nukes which ended the war. It was also partly, but at roughly the same time, the Soviet Union finally um, launched an attack on the Japanese, which is something that the Americans have been, well, and, and the, the British and Commonwealth forces have been urging to do for a very long time. Um, ironically, that's why we now have North Korea as a separate country to South Korea. If the, the Soviets had held off a few more weeks and Japan had surrendered just based on the nukes, um, there would be no Kim, Kim Jong-un. So yeah, that would, that would probably be a good thing. Hello United Nations. But we got a problem. These two don't even like each other. They start another war. Now with nuclear bombs. <laughs> yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that, but I still hate you. It's alliance time, baby. Now with other countries to back us up. Also, Germany's in shambles. It's like the hotspot. There's some other wars going on and stuff. Back them up! Look, it's communism. And it scared the crap out of everybody. So, of course, during the Cold War, there were proxy wars, literally, in every continent of the world, um, essentially between the American-led alliance and the Soviet-led alliance, with, with, with Maoist China as a kind of weird third play, which is also communist, but simultaneously anti-Soviet, uh, as an anti-Soviet union. Um, but yeah, it was it was a near run thing in terms of it turning into an open conflict. And to be honest, if nukes hadn't been invented, I think it probably would have done. The two superpowers wanted to be better than the other in weapons, wars, allies, and now in space. Yes, the Soviet thanks. Union just put a thing in space. Oh, heck nah. Then the US creates NASA. America is booming like the population. Everyone's got television and fast food becomes a revelation. Like we're talking about the first McDonald's here. Wait. Oh, wow. Wait, what we use this? Cuba's communist? This results in the end of the world. Almost. Screw this, said Kennedy. We're going to the moon. And he gets assassinated. Racism is bad. Civil rights time. Buses. Education. Marches. Oh, shoot. Luther King, man? He's standing for equality to fight racism. And the US agrees. Dude. So that, that's a kind of an incredible... I mean, all, that's almost a moment that... America has a very, very long and very, very proud history of democracy. Far, far longer than most countries. But... Arguably, it still wasn't a proper full democracy until um, the kind of full emancipation of African Americans during the, the 60s. So I, mean, I, 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 I say someone from the UK and the UK did not become a full democracy for a very, very long time. I mean, at the, at the very earliest kind of 1920s, but really you'd have to say it'd be the end of empire because you can't reclaim your democracy and then rule most of your population as imperial subjects. Um, so America has a very long and proud history of democracy, but arguably this was kind of the final great American democratic awakening, the um, civil rights movement. Dude, I saw him, man! Why is everything sexy? Lyndon wants to take Vietnam to the next level, so he sends a lot of troops. The US slapped the Soviets in their face and landed the first dudes on the moon, introducing Richard Nixon, and he's done with Vietnam because it's a disaster. There goes Watergate. So there, there was always a lot of concern that Vietnam would be kind of the first um, the first domino to fall, essentially. And if, if this is one of the arguments of fighting the Vietnam War, if um, the communists won Vietnam, they'd then start winning in other parts of Southeast Asia and it would kind of create a domino effect. 
Obviously that didn't happen. One of the interesting things that Reagan did do is there was a, a real rapprochement between the United States and Maoist China, and communist China. Um, I mean, really, that, that was based largely around a kind of shared loathing of the Soviet Union, which is a, a bit odd considering various ideological differences. But that, that was quite an important... I mean, managing to drive a state between the Soviet Union and China was a big Western win in the Cold War. It ruining Nixon's career. Now nobody trusts the government. <laughs> Iran just had a revolution, kidnapping multiple Americans because Jimmy Carter and their king were best friends. It's Reagan time. Technology is getting better too and the world's more connected. Oh my God, bro, it's computers. You can check emails and play games on it. I'm gonna make things more free to you guys. This makes the Soviet Union collapse. But hey, at least Germany's back together. Companies start becoming bigger and bigger. Thanks, Bill. Some. So, the strength of American, of corporate America is just insane. So if you look at like the biggest technology companies in the world, for example, they're virtually all, even the vast, vast majority are American and there are a few which are Chinese, um, Japanese, etc. But like Europe is so far behind. Like the, the, the amount of innovation that comes out of America is mind blowing. Um, and, and, and to this day, I mean, it's not, 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 not a historic thing. Some buildings just got bombed. Happy New Year. Then, obliterated. Then a war starts over that. Surprise, everyone's got a cell phone now. There's the earth where I was actually born. It's on fire. And the economy crashed again. Surprise, Obama. And now, Obamacare. It's like healthcare, but from Obama. Now you can talk to people online, on your phone. So like, this is the point where history becomes real for me, because I can actually remember this stuff. Now you can order stuff online, on your phone. Oh, um, NF, non-refundable tokens, anyone? Everything just got shut down, and it just got political, and cancelled on Twitter. <laughs> then we buy the universe, or maybe go extinct, I don't know. Well, on that incredibly optimistic forward slash pessimistic note, um, there are, I think that was a, a very interesting, although slightly strange in areas run through American history. I, I, for one, am an optimist about America's future. I think if America, assuming America's political divisions don't tear it apart, and I don't think they need to, I think America has a, a truly great future. Um, I think, I mean, even though China will probably overtake America in terms of its economy in the next sort of 20 years or so, I reckon there's a good chance America will retake that lead. America has big demographic advantages over China, whose population looks set to collapse. But that, that, that's, that's me going off on a tangent. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, please, if you haven't already, please do subscribe and God bless America.